the word today. Come on. We're going to have my lesson on impossible faith. And our amazing shepherd in training, David Jackson, is going to be preaching on impossible love. Amen? Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis. I was really encouraged by that communion message. Yeah. Did it test you an amazing yeah. message? Yeah. <laughs> brother Owen right there. The support right there. I don't think they mentioned, but they're actually dating, amen? Oh, it's the season as it's the Valentine oh, season. Yeah. But we're, we're not going to talk about me. You know, but, uh, we're going to go to Genesis, amen? Let's bring it back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 21, we're going to have one of the greatest short stories in the Bible, the story of Enoch. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived 365 years. Enoch walked with God faithfully. Then he was no more because God took him away, and the church said, Amen. Wow. Come on. Wow. 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 It's interesting. Have you ever wondered why they say 365 years? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why 365 years did God take him away? It was because God wants us to walk with him faithfully every single day of our lives. And then God can take us away. Amen? But imagine how, how, how he must have walked. Was it a discouraging walk? Was he, was he walking down? Oh, my finances. Oh, man. My relationship issues. Oh, man. The struggles of life. My job. Schoolwork. Oh, midterms. Oh, how about, oh my gosh, the, my back pains and all these different things going on. Was that his life? No. no. He was fired up because he was faithful with God. It had nothing to do with his circumstances. You can imagine him walking every day. Amen. Yeah. I need help with this, right? Because I'm the tall guy, I slouch over a lot. Everyone's down here, you know. I, I get hugs and it's like this sometimes. You know I mean? but, but, but that's how it is sometimes. I imagine Enoch had his head up because he was faithful with his God. And that's how it ought to be with us. We know that faith is described in Hebrews 11 1 that now being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Right. Now we know that's a description, not a definition. Because faith is not limited to just that alone. Rather, Enoch walked with God every day on earth, so God took him to heaven. That's right. Don't you want that to be your story? Yeah. How encouraging will that be when we're with God in heaven? Amen? Amen. David faced so many trials, but he was faithful with God. Alexi, he faced so many trials, Come on, and he was faithful with God. Edgar, he faced so many trials, and he was faithful with God. The lady, she faced so many trials, and she was faithful with God. Diane, she was faithful with God. Tim was faithful with God. Tina was faithful with God, so God took them to heaven, amen? But you want that to be your story? I have one point, and the title is, Walking faithfully with God. Come on. Come on bro. My one point is connect to your creator. Amen. Connect to your creator. In Matthew <coughs> chapter 18. We're going to look at verse 18. We're going to look at it. In chapter 18, beginning and ending in verse 18, we have Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, I tell you the truth. Whatever you buy on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We find this principle very true today. 
Whatever you do on earth has implications in the next life. Amen? So when we walk faithfully with God on earth, we can imagine we're going to be with God in heaven. In the same way when we do not walk faithfully with God on earth, we are doomed to destruction in hell. This is the reality. And I can imagine so many times in my life, I feel so much pressure, guys. In my mind, I feel overwhelmed. But in my heart, I'm super encouraged. Because of the circumstances going on. I think about leading the Bible talk. How about the deep waters Bible talk? <laughs> the purposes of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man or woman of understanding draws out the heart. Amen? Yeah. I think about the campus ministry. The 19 disciples, including myself. I think about the four disciples God's given me to oversee. Alexi. Alexi's my crown and joy. Yeah. Alexi is a prayer that was answered two years in the making. As a young Christian, I always wanted to baptize someone from China. That was my heart. I fasted for it, I prayed for it, and I got close three times. And Alexi is an answered prayer. Alexi, you're a miracle. Even him doing the prayer this yeah. morning, wasn't that right. encouraging? Yes. Yeah. 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 One of the best prayers yeah. I've heard about <coughs> God's ear, amen? <laughs> and I think about James. Mm -hmm. James has been through so much, yeah. but James is still fighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was one of the first brothers I knew before I moved here. Mm -hmm. Really, one of the only brothers besides Owen and Joel, amen? Mm -hmm. But James is still here with us. Yeah. He hasn't yeah. given up on his yeah. God. Come on, think about Edgar. What would the church be like without Edgar? Right? Oh, yeah. Edgar brings so much joy. Because yeah, when he's fired up, he can't help but be fired up. Because he's going to do something that's going to freak you out. You know? You're going to be like, whoa! I remember yesterday I was hearing a story about Edgar and it just brought me so much joy. Come on, come on. Think about Gilbert. Yeah. 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 Gilbert is just a servant. Yeah. You ask Gilbert to do something, and he's going to do it with his whole heart, no complaints. Yeah. It's all about those good vibes, right, bro? <laughs> Think about all the guys I'm studying with. Jared. Come Jared, pretty soon we're going to have the whole football team in here. Yeah. It's crazy. Awesome. we got to get Benning in here. Yeah. I think about all the other responsibilities given God's given me in leadership. Leadership is pressure. Every day, you're ready for your name to be called to do something that night. Yeah. You're ready. Because right. it's going to happen. You expect right. it. Mm -hmm. you got to be prepared in season and out of season. Right. Right. With the pressure. And then you add on ICCM. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Books you haven't even bought yet. Yeah. <laughs> that you got to read 500 pages of in the next two weeks. Yeah. Book reports you got to write. Oh, yeah. All these different lessons you got to prepare six page articles all the pressure then you had a girlfriend oh, oh my gosh oh my gosh those who are dating or updated know what I'm talking about that's a lot of pressure I can easily feel overwhelmed guys I didn't even mention special missions oh my gosh there's so much on it and it's all in here I can find myself walking but in my heart, I know all I've got to do is get better than God. Yeah. And that's your story, too. Yeah. Right? Insert whatever trial or pressure and anxiety that's on your mind and cast it on to the Lord, for He cares for you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Exactly. One more day. One closer to that. Mm -hmm. That's the motto. That's what keeps me going. Mm -hmm. I remember that no matter what's going on in life, if we fight just one more day longer, yeah. we can be with God in paradise. Right. If we are faithful with God just one day longer, we can be with God in paradise. Yeah. We don't know when Jesus is coming back, but we do know that we can be faithful because it's just a decision away. Right. In Luke 18, verse 18, Jesus has this to say. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Jesus is looking for faith. Right. That's what he's looking for. Yeah. That's what he's searching for. Will he 
will he find it in you? Come on. Don't let your circumstances destroy <coughs> your relationship with God. Yeah, right. It's not worth it. Right. A day struggling or 365 days a year struggling is much better than struggling in eternal destruction in hell. Yeah. It's not worth it. Even if we gain the world here, it's not even comparable to what we have there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Think about Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Think about Wi-Fi. We want to use it to access the internet all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be accessible always. But how discouraging is it when you pay your bill and your Wi-Fi says the word disconnected? How discouraging is that? You want you, you're you expecting to log in, to go on Facebook, and it's disconnected. What the heck? So many times we gotta go up there, we gotta make sure you're plugged in. Or you gotta go back to the Nintendo 64 days, you gotta start blowing in the plug in. <laughs> All these different things. Then you gotta wait for it to reboot, you know what I'm talking about? Or even in the other way, buffering. <laughs> when your connection's weak, you see the three the dots just going over in a circle. Oh my gosh, I know it's a circle. Just hurry up. That's not making time go any faster. It's so discouraging. But it's discouraging too when we pray for something, and we pray for something, and it doesn't come true. When God doesn't make it happen for us. Because we expect it to work every time. The reason so many of us can be discouraged is that we expect God to work and we haven't even paid the bill yet. We haven't paid the bill of prayer. We haven't paid the bill of fasting. We haven't paid the bill of prayer and crying your heart out to God. When's the last time you cried when you confessed your sin? Amen. We haven't paid the prayer. We haven't paid the bill. But God's so encouraging that even though we can fail, He still blesses us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because He's a loving Father and you're His loving son or daughter. Mm -hmm. No matter what, He's still going to take care of us. And so many times we can think that it's a blessing because we're doing good. In reality, we're doing so bad. Mm -hmm. Get connected. Come on. What would we do in our lives if we connected to God? Mm. What could God do through you? Right. Come on, bro. If you connect to God in here, yeah. in here, not just in here, I can tell you the truth. God's going to do miracles in your life. Because mm. that's what he wants. He wants a connection to you. I think of Psalm 37, verse 28. It says, For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. In Proverbs 28, verse 20, it says, A faithful man will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will God go unpunished. I think of Moses in Numbers 12, verse 7. It says, He is faithful in all my house. Think of David. In 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 41, it says, Now arise, Lord God, and come. May your priests, Lord God, be clothed with salvation. <coughs> May your faithful people rejoice in your goodness. I think of the Proverbs 31 woman. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Isn't that what you want to be, ladies? Yeah. Yeah. And as men, don't you want to be David? Mm -hmm. We want to be faithful mm -hmm. to our God. Right. The truth is, pressure in life is there to prepare you for the next big obstacle to build you even higher in your faith. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. King David in 1 Samuel 17. Come on. 1 Samuel 17. Come on, bro. You guys still with me? Yeah. yeah. David went through a lot. And he's going to talk about it here because what he went through prepared him for the next big obstacle. In verse 17, in beginning of verse 36, it reads, Your servant
servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. What a conviction David had, amen? Yeah. Imagine, guys, you you're, you're, you're wake up in the morning and, and a lion has attacked one of your cattle. And we're not talking Lion King here. This is a real life. You see, you get enraged because you're mad that he's taken God's possessions. You go after that lion and you kill a lion. Imagine a bear. Way bigger than me. If you think I'm talking. A bear. And I'm not talking Smokey the Bear. <laughs> this ain't a forest fire. He's trying to take your life away. And you fight the bear kill the bear. And then imagine, here comes Goliath. Mm -hmm. But because he faced the lion and won, because he faced the bear and won, he was ready for his Goliath. Right. Mm -hmm. David placed his faith in God. And so he went to war with faith that God was going to do it. That's right. We must do the same. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. We've got to face the lion of finances. We've got to face the lion of special needs. We've got to face the bear of schoolwork. The bear of relationship issues. The bear of persecutions. The bear of sin that Satan's trying to rebuild in your life. The bear of everything that easily entangles you so you can't be faithful. You've got to face your bears, brothers and sisters. Yeah. So now, when the time comes, you can face your Goliath. Right. Brothers and sisters, we can't back down. Right. Amen? Amen? We can't back down. And in reality, I'm reminded of this song. Tom. It's a song by Tom Petty. <laughs> no more breakers. Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 